You're listening to More Than a Song, episode 110. And welcome to this episode of More Than a Song. My name is Michelle Nizat, and this is the podcast dedicated to helping you discover the truth of Scripture hidden in today's popular Christian music. My goal is to teach you to connect portions of God's Word with the songs you're singing along with on the radio, to help you meditate on truths that will transform your way of thinking and ultimately your life. I think it's neat that we can use anything to inspire us to dive into God's Word. But one of the most powerful things I can think of is when lyrics of a song come directly from God's Word. It's powerful because when you sing them, you're singing the very words of God. And music is a very powerful way to hide God's Word in your heart. And it's effective. After all, how many times do you find yourself singing along and you didn't even try hard to memorize the words? And for this reason, I am drawn to this week's song, Alive in Me, by J.J. Weeks Band. From the very first line of the first verse, it draws us straight into Scripture. I may be hard-pressed on every side, but I won't be crushed. I'll be all right. I may be down the place I'm in, but I know the end. I know who wins. I may be down, but I'm not out. You're not finished yet. The very same. This lyric comes straight from 2 Corinthians 4 8, which says, We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Now, I spent a, quite a bit of time in Second Corinthians reading from chapters 1 through chapter 5 to really try to understand the context of this verse. And I, I started asking myself, why? Why can we be hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed? How is it that we can be in despair, persecuted, and struck down, but not destroyed? Well, the verse right above this alludes to how in verse seven, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. And of course, we are the jars of clay. We are the fragile ones, the ones that can be easily broken. And yet God chooses to put such a divine treasure in inside of us. This all surpassing power from God in us is alive in us, but it's not from us. It's from God. And uh, it that's what allows us this power, this all surpassing power that is from God and not from us. That's what allows us to not be crushed, not in despair, not abandoned and not destroyed. It's the spirit alive in us. Those of us who accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, that are gifted this power that's alive in us. The very same light that pierced the dark, the very same word that sealed the sea, the very same spirit that tore the veil is alive in me. You're alive in me. I've been going back and forth all week. I have notes for two very different episodes, and heading it into an Easter break vacation with my family, I've been trying to write and record two episodes at once since I won't be at home to record and produce the podcast. And so I wanted to sit in 2 Corinthians between chapters 3, 4, and 5. Um, I was reading verses from all around there, and I started the week with a um, physical Bible in the English Standard Version. My computer was on the Blitz. I had left my iPad at work that day. I didn't really want to use my phone um, to look up the scriptures because I like to see more uh, more words on the page. And so I had this physical Bible, um, my, my ESV, and it's a great translation. It is a word for word translation. And um, it's wonderful to use in study because because of that, because it's a word for word translation from the original Hebrew and Greek. And um, I love my New Living Translation because it's a thought for thought version, much easier to read and understand, uh, really more conversational the way we speak today. 
But my physical copy of my New Living Translation, well, that was at work too. So you know what happened to me as I was reading the English Standard Version, my little physical my physical Bible, I went old school. What happened to me this week was I got confused and frustrated. There were phrases that I couldn't explain to you from just the previous study that I've done without using some of the study tools that I generally access online. And so because I just didn't have all of that directly in my mind, accessible in my brain without accessing some of these tools that I usually do online, I got a glimpse of what it might be like for you. I get I got a glimpse of, of why you might give up. You know, I get it. I'm unique. I I love learning. I find it challenging and exciting. And I love super important life applications as I run across them. I love seemingly random character profiles. I love random facts that have no deep or spiritual meaning as I read God's word. I love chasing down rabbits and creating lists and timelines. And I hope that I can teach you to try some of these things to help you get different results than you're getting, than you've been getting. But When you've had a long day and you've grabbed your Bible and you've purposed in your heart to eke out a few minutes in God's word, desperate for it to speak to you, and you read something like, for if there was glory in the ministry of condemnation, the ministry of righteousness must far exceed it in glory. And then you're not 100% sure what glory means or condemnation or righteousness. I mean, we know what it means sort of. It just seems so lofty and unexplainable. So I get it. I get it in that moment when I I might normally go and seek out some tools to define glory or seek out some tools to define condemnation or righteousness so that I can unpack it for you. But I didn't have those tools at my fingertips. And, and when you're just reading your Bible and you just want it to speak to you, I can understand why it can be so frustrating and why you might give up or why you might be so discouraged that you may never pick it up to begin with. You know, growing up, my mom and I, we would read in the same room. We both loved to read. We had a front living room in our house with tons of windows and light streaming in. My mom would read in her small green swivel chair, and I would sprawl on this black velvet armchair. You know, the kind with those enormous rounded arms. I would rest in the back of my neck on one arm and let the back of my knees drape over the other arm and kind of kick my feet. And she would read her book and I would read mine. And once in a while we'd chuckle or we'd sniff with tears and the other would stop and say, what? And you'd share that part of the story that we were reading. Uh, I just love those memories. And you know what part of the memory I don't love? Well, it's this part when I would say, hey, mom, what does poignant mean? And she would correct me and say, it's poignant. Go look it up. And I didn't want to look it up. My fuzzy chair was comfortable and I was really into the story. And surely I could figure it out with context clues, but it would be so much easier if she would just tell me what it meant so I could just keep reading. But I'm a learner, remember, so I couldn't keep a train of thought until I looked it up because it would drive me crazy. But here's the kicker. Um, I didn't have Siri. Oh, no. For you young listeners out there, I had good old Webster. He was about five pounds and falling apart on a bookshelf in the office. But here I go. I would look it up and then there would be a word in the definition that I didn't really understand that would send me looking up another word and tell what I really wanted, which was an understanding of the text and the story that I was reading was lost in this distraction. Now, I've since learned why she did that. Now, I always thought thought it was her trying to be this good mom and teach me how to find out answers for myself. And, you know, to her credit, I'm sure that was part of it. But really... She didn't know how to explain it off the top of her head herself. You want to know how I know? (laughs) Because I'm a mom and I do the same thing to my kids. But you know what that's like. You know the meaning of a word, but you can't put it into words to explain it to someone else. And that's where I found myself this week on your behalf. And that's why you put down your Bible and stop reading. And that's why it's such a burden for you to fall in love with God's word because there's parts of it that are hard and it makes you feel less than or dumb or clumsy even, embarrassed. And you have enough of that in your life already, right? You don't need a Bible to make you feel that way too. 
So here is my first bite for this week. I try to teach Bible interaction tool exercises each week to help you take a bite out of this giant beast that we know as the Bible. And so here's my first bite. Here it is. Skip over the stuff you don't understand for now and zero in on the stuff you do. Now, I am not giving you a pass forever. As a follower of Christ, you have committed to actually follow. And that means you have to know where he's going. And God reveals all of that in his word. And sometimes it will be work. And sometimes it will take some blood, sweat, and tears. Tears even, yes. But he wants you to know him. And until you can begin to understand and then articulate the deeper things, stick with the stuff you can understand. Otherwise, you'll miss the truth tucked in the verses that I've already read. For we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. And then there's this. Later on, it says, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Now, that is some truth we can cling to. But if we can't articulate what glory means, we know eternal means forever. And we know that glory is good. So if we have a forever filled with something good, I'll take it. So here comes the next bite. Get inspired by something and dig in to God's word from there. I know, let's use a song. (laughs) Now I'm trying to be a little funny and serious at the same time. You can listen to Christian songs and, and never let them inspire you to read your Bible. That's what I'm doing on this podcast, taking Christian music and hopefully inspiring you to read your Bible. But you can listen all day long and never feel the urge or let it inspire you to read the Bible. You can read daily devotions. There's, you know, little one page daily devotionals and never let them inspire you to read the Bible. You can listen to weekly sermons and never let them inspire you to pick up your Bible and read it for yourself. So the bite, the Bible interaction tool exercise is pick one. And pick up your Bible and read. And don't forget our first bite. Don't forget our first Bible interaction tool exercise as you do. Focus in, zero in on the stuff that you do understand and let it change the way you think. So I'm going to take the chorus and let's see where it leads us today. So I looked up the lyrics online and then I made a list on a piece of note paper. The light that pierced the dark, the word that stilled the sea, the spirit that tore the veil, the power that healed our hearts, the love that set us free, and the spirit that conquered death. All of this is alive in me. But I don't, I don't want to take J.J. Week's um, band word for it. I want scriptural proof for myself. And then depending on the time that you have, you could take this list and look up one thing a day for six days because there's six things. Or you could take a bigger chunk one day, of a bigger chunk of time and kind of look up scripture that for all six and then just review it all every day for six days or seven days. You know, there's power in reading God's word out loud. So once you get that scripture, you could read that scripture reference related to each truth out loud every day and then ponder it and pray on it all day. So like I said before, just just pick one. 
Also, I'm going to give you some references, but there are a ton that you could choose from. I mean, I'm going to pick one or two per per lyric. You could take my list and then add a reference of your own, and that would be really neat. So you might say, Michelle, I have no idea where to go to find scriptures. I am not as familiar with different references as you are. Or I'm new, I'm a brand new believer, and I don't even know where to start reading my Bible. So here's my tip for that. Ask Siri. I'm, I'm not even kidding. I mean, just do a web search for light that pierced the dark scripture. And if you add the words Bible Hub, Bible Hub is one of the online tools that I use, you'll be given a list of scriptures from Bible Hub that you could start looking through. So let's start with the light that pierced the dark. Now, I immediately thought of the book of John, uh, the gospel of John, where John describes Jesus like this. In the beginning was the Word, capital W, Word. So this is talking about Jesus. So every time you hear the word Word, it's really referring to Jesus. So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Now, Jesus is our light, the truth. He says other other places that he is the truth and the light. And so he, he shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. So it's the very same light that pierced the dark. This life that was in Christ, the spirit of God in Christ has been has been placed in us as believers. And so that is where we get that truth. So whenever you sing that the light that pierced the dark is alive in me, that's what you're talking about. Now, because I had been reading in 2 Corinthians this week, I was drawn to several verses as we go through these points in 2 Corinthians. And so there was one in chapter 4, verse 6. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of of Christ. Now, if you read that real fast, you may not get it, but all the words in there, we understand. So that's not like those fancy eternal glory, righteousness, condemnation, all those kinds of things. So let's break that down. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, that's in quotes. I mean, that was at creation. (laughs) That was at the beginning of the world. Let light shine out of darkness. So it's the same God who said, let light not shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts. So remember the spirit that we're given is the light of, of God, the light of Christ in our hearts to give us light of the knowledge of God's glory. So how do we have the knowledge of God's glory? You're thinking, I don't have the knowledge of God's glory. Well, it was displayed in the face of Christ. So if we study Christ and we get to know him and we read his words and we see his actions and we study him, then we will have the revelation. The light will shine on that and will bring it to uh, our understanding the knowledge of God's glory. So isn't that so neat? That's how powerful this spirit that lives in us, that's how powerful it is to sing that same light that pierced the dark is alive in me. Now, what about the lyric that refers to the word that stilled the sea? Well, Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 through 27 tells the story of Jesus and his disciples on a boat when a great storm arose and Jesus was sleeping and the disciples were freaking out. And so they woke him up. They thought they were going to die. And he said to them, why are you afraid? Oh, you of little faith. Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a great calm. Okay, so Jesus rose up rebuked the winds in the sea. So he fussed at the winds in the sea and told them to calm down. And there was a great calm. That is the spirit that is alive in me. So when the storms of your life start rising up in you, this there is a spirit that lives in you that has the power to say, whoa, 
calm down and there can be a great calm. That same word that stilled the sea is alive in you. Now, what about the spirit that tore the veil? Now, when I hear that, I immediately thought of the curtain that separated the people from the Holy of Holies in the temple in the Old and New Testament. This curtain kept us from an intimate relationship with God, a personal relationship with God. The priest, the high priest, in fact, would go in on our behalf into the Holy of Holies. And there were a lot of rules around that that would even make him a a viable candidate to go into this place. And in Matthew 27, 51, at the death of Christ, that curtain was torn in two. It is a visible representation of a spiritual truth. And that is that we don't need anyone to access God on our behalf anymore. Christ has made the way. He has torn the thing, keeping us separate from God. He's torn it in two through his death on our behalf. But then I couldn't help but notice references to the word veil in 2 Corinthians 3. Remember, I said I was in 2 Corinthians this week. And that talks about Moses and the veil he wore over his face whenever he would leave the presence of God. Because when he was talking with God and he he came out from talking with God face to face, his face would actually glow after speaking with the Lord. But eventually that glow would fade. Fade. In fact, Paul describes it this way, like, not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. You see, Moses didn't want them to see what it looked like when the glory faded. He didn't want them to experience the end of the glory of God. And so it goes on to say, but their minds were hardened for to this day, when they read the old covenant, that same veil remains unlifted because only through Christ is it taken away. You see, so he's saying there was a veil, not just over uh, to keep them from seeing the glory of God, that veil covered their hearts so that they couldn't even see the glory of God, but that that veil is is taken away in Christ. And it says, um, yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Christ has removed the veil that keeps us from really seeing the glory of God. So that same spirit that tore the veil, that same spirit that removes that veil from our hearts, it's alive in me. It's alive in you. What about the power that healed our hearts? One of my favorite verses is Psalm 147, 3. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The very same power that healed our hearts is alive in me. And what about the love that sets us free? We're back to 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17. It's right after what we just read about veiled faces. And it says this, the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The spirit of the Lord is alive in me. And this verse confirms it. Where he is, there is freedom. We are free. The love that sets us free is alive in us. And as we close, and especially coming off of a glorious Easter weekend where we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, it takes a lot of power to raise the dead to life. Don't you agree? Well, Romans 8, 11 says the spirit who raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. Wait, what? The same spirit that raised Christ. Christ from the dead is alive in me? Oh, that I would live my life with that kind of power. The spirit that conquered death is alive in me. So what's next? You can pull this list of scripture references that I just read. You can pull them from the show notes found at michellekneesat.com forward slash 110, so 110, and ponder those. You can use the lyrics from the chorus of this song and look up your own references to ponder. 
read those verses and then so you could just do that you could read over them read them out loud ponder them think about them maybe when you pull them out you'll read them in context meaning read the entire psalm 147 not just the one verse we pulled out read the whole story of the calming of the stormy sea for example okay or you might be inspired to read the first few chapters of second corinthians like i did and just sit there for the week don't forget our bites Zero in on what you can understand for now. Don't miss out on the good stuff you do understand because of discouragement about the stuff you don't. And go ahead and get inspired. Let's jump into God's word. Oh, and by the way, poignant means evoking a keen sense of sadness or regret. I did look it up that day and I was able to understand it for myself and I added it to my vocabulary. And after that, I actually started hearing it everywhere. And without the extra work it took to look it up for myself, it never would have stuck. Thanks, Mom. And while you're in God's Word this week, let me know how you're doing. Email me, michelle at michellekneesat.com. You can hop on Twitter or Facebook, and let's talk about what you're learning. Now, before I tell you what song will be featured next week, I want to shout out to Drew from Oklahoma and John from Johannesburg, South Africa. These are my newest subscribers to my website. Welcome. Now, the benefit of subscribing is that I will email you once a week. And in that email, you'll get a weekly memory verse resource to display on your smartphone, tablet, desktop, or you can print it out. Uh, You'll get an email recap of the week's episode, and you'll get instant access to any of the resources I create for my episodes. It's just my my way to say thank you for listening. So head over to michellekneesat.com and subscribe today. And then don't miss an episode of my podcast. You can subscribe in iTunes or Stitcher Radio. And if you're in iTunes, would you please leave me a written review and a star rating? It really encourages me, but it also helps me stay visible to new listeners. And as always, if you take the time to review my podcast, I will take the time to personally thank you right here on the podcast. Well, that's it for this episode of More Than a Song. Next week, I will use Live On Forever by The Afters, a request by my daughter, Emily. If you liked this episode, would you mind sharing it with others? I've made it really easy. With just one click, you can share via Facebook, Twitter, or email. Just head over to michellekneesat.com forward slash 110. And while you're there, I'd love to hear from you. Click on comment to join the conversation. Until next time, take time to meditate on God's word and consider his ways.